Yeah. Um, I would have wished that Mia Goth would have got a nomination, but the Grammy specifically doesn't recognize horror movies, so she never would have got one. But she deserved it, though. Yeah, that was intense. Action films, horrors, they don't really no. look at very much. From the little so, bits yeah. I've seen, this was legit. Uh, yeah. Excited to break yeah. it down. Uh, Spence, I'm kick back to you for any questions, collaborations. Questions. Question. Question. Um, so, of all the films, right, what made you really want to do uh, this film, Pearl? Um, so what made me want to choose Pearl is, one, I don't think y'all have ever done a horror movie, so I wanted to kind of bring in in that light. I love horror movies. Um, I feel like the characters within horror movies deserve, deserve a fair shake as far as like getting therapized before they became the monster that they are. Because um, at the end of the day, like they're human before they turn. Um, Pearl specifically, I feel like she goes through what most young people go through as far as like, feeling either trapped in a situation that they're in, um, having a bad relationship, probably like with their parents or friends or support system that should be their support system and kind of putting all their eggs in one basket on one opportunity. And if they miss it, um, kind of dealing with the ramifications of that and not feeling like that's the end of the world. Cause obviously Pearl chose that like that was the end of her world. And she had the, acts a few people up just because she didn't get what she wanted and along with um tying in like social media of like everyone wants to see everyone wants to be seen everyone wants to be liked and loved so um i think a lot of young people also feel that way yeah totally and also i mean it's like now it's it's even it feels like it's even more pressure now because of social media because oh, yeah, you have the platforms to do it right like people like 1918 like you have a few if you're in like rural texas or whatever it's like you know you're not going to get many chances at doing things now everybody has a chance and maybe there's even more pressure there to actually do something because you see everyone yeah. else getting stuff done and having deals and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden you're like, Whoa, what am I doing? Yeah, absolutely. Like yeah. if you look at like what just happened recently with the hawk to a girl, she lives like in a small town in Tennessee and like, she's absolutely blowing up from that. <laughs> blowing, like, um, literally blowing up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Double entendre. <laughs> But you're right. Yeah. I mean, it, it reminds me. She's her rise to stardom is just as big as damn near the the guy during the pandemic, the the Chicano guy drinking cranberry juice on the skateboard. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the same with like the yodeler kid, like in the store. Like these one-off situations, we build up. I mean, like maybe that just is the blame on like American society and how we view entertainment and everything. We just blow up the wrong people. And just for literally nothing. Literally nothing. But we make them famous. We make them millionaires. We certainly do. We certainly do. Oh, wow. Talking about you know, blowjobs. Wow. Make yeah. them famous. Instantly. Make this white woman famous. Oh, hey. You know, doing any civil rights stuff? No. Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> any humanitarian things? No. Dude, no. this is super interesting. Like, I mean, yesterday I was at the gym on my private page, just my personal page, and I pulled it up and it was like some like it was some art page that I follow with a million followers and it was nothing but promos for like pornography and, and OnlyFans. And so I look at the comments just to see and they're like unfollow reports. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to report this because this is supposed to be an art page. Um, so it's amazing how far that video was able to go. And this is where I'm going to turn this. Some folks made some comments on one of our podcasts, Spencer, the genocide one, which is the Marvel one that we did on the X-Men and relating that to like Palestine related stuff. Well, there's some comments that were on there and I was going to get to, but I was busy. Instagram and meta deleted them. I did not delete oh, wow. them. Oh, wow. I did not do anything to them. It was specifically, they were talking about issues related to Palestine and issues with better help and them having issues with us being sponsored by better help because they, Israel like promoted them and said that everyone in Israel gets six months of free therapy through better help. Mm. Better help clarified that and said anyone dealing with the war in general or have who has fallouts or issues with the war in general, doesn't matter where you live in the world can get therapy from better help for six months. So I do want to promo that 
But I was going to respond to that. And when I went to, it was gone. I don't know if that person deleted it, but I feel like Meta was deleting things from that post. It's interesting what gets pushed, what doesn't get pushed. We talked about this with uh, Dr. Rich Hall. I feel like a lot of folks of color do get suppressed on social media, specifically Meta, where these other folks, they, they, but, tend, to, they, they tend to get tons of followers. Like I see some of these therapists that are starting out and lack of a better word, uh, white women. Then we get like 2,000, 3,000 followers instantly. And us, dude, it took us uh, like a year and a half to get there. And, and then yeah. we started to take off. I'm done on my little rant, yeah. but there's some funny business going on in our comment section. I promise you it's yeah. me not deleting these things. I promise right. you, yeah. uh, for those of us listening. Yeah, no. no, and just kind of piggyback it off of that. It's, it's kind of just, it's ridiculous how, like, just how much, and you don't want to come off as just, like, complaining about it, because right. then you're just seen as, like, you're just, you're crying about certain things. Yeah, but we're not getting famous. It's a real big yeah. issue. It's like it all these voices don't get heard because they don't fit a certain profile. Like, oh, I'm not selling yeah. sex. Uh, we're just trying to get mental health out there, uh, getting people to either, you know, laugh, learn, all those different things. Um, but the fact that we're, you know, we're men and that we're, you know, not either, we're not completely on either side of things mm -hmm. also plays a big part too, you know, and it, it kind of sucks, um, for the fact that we only can see, oh, Hey, um, go buy my only fans. Um, I'm a snitch. I will, I will snitch those. I will snitch those accounts out. I don't care. Yeah. I'm just like, no, I don't want to be seeing this right now. You know, it's like I'm just trying to laugh and enjoy my feeds. I don't feel like seeing ass every five yeah. seconds. Bro, this I'm was like, Instagram. it was real pornographic. I'm like, bro, this is an art page. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But as it's we art. as we piggyback back to like people want everyone wanted to be right. famous. Right. I mean, it's true. And I was thinking about this podcast. I was thinking about this yesterday. Uh, so I think it's awesome that it ties into this with Keyshawn's topic today. I don't think me and Spencer started this like wanting to be famous. We started this just a couple of best friends. They just wanted to laugh and already talk about movies. Go figure this entire podcast was based around hyperfantasia, which I had no idea what the hell it was until two podcasts ago <laughs> and how I visualize and see things and interpret things. And I figured that other people can learn from it. Uh, and then yeah. Instagram is nothing but people using these reels to like laugh at things. Not a lot of them are like psychoeducational. Um, sure. so we did this to create a community. I remember one of the therapists, Spencer said, well, after, after, you know, off the record, they were like, well, why are you guys even doing this? Like, are you trying to like make money? I was like, well, we make money. Awesome. But they were like, are you trying to like get clients? I'm like, no, I'm not trying to get any clients. Am I supposed to get clients? They're like, well, I don't <laughs> like, how are you going to make money off of this? I was like, I don't know. Like, I'm just, just doing this. And like one day we'll just continue to interview people and we'll just build a show. And I just thought about how they wanted us to monetize things and like get clients and coach and like do therapy with people online. I was like, well, no, I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't have time to do that. Yeah. I just want to have fun and like give education, free education, free. Yeah. yeah. So I was thinking about these things and how we pervert things into being famous and monetizing things. I also know I'm very privileged and I make a good amount of money now, so I don't have to do that. Um, right. Now that I started my own private practice, I still don't plan on getting any clients from here. Like, I don't want to get clients from here. This is supposed to be like free psychoeducation. Right. My private practice is working for folks like in my community. So it's just things I was thinking about while working out yesterday. First time working out in a month. I can barely move. <laughs> I can barely fucking move. Like everything hurts. Yeah. My ankles are swollen. Right. I'm like, am I pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Welcome to motherhood. All right. <laughs> I'll kick it back to you, Spence. Any more uh, questions for Keyshawn? Yeah. Um, so you kind of speak about like just Pearl's humanity um, in the beginning, right? And how it just slowly kind of dilutes and things like that. Um, yeah. Is this like one of your favorite characters in like horror films or is this or do you have somebody who's like origin story that you've seen and they built up in other ways that you like more i would say like with horror in in general like you 
rarely get to see like character pieces that actually go into depth. Like right. when's the last time you actually know about like Jason Voorhees or Michael Myers or Freddy Cougar? Like you don't really get to see like their story, their origin. So um, I would say Pearl was like one of the first um, like horror character that we actually get to see why she is the way she is. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Check out the full episode on our channel and anywhere you find podcasts. Also, remember to like and subscribe. Whoop whoop.